first film. Yeah, okay. okay, okay. Lovely. Cheers, Greg. All right, thanks, Maria. Okay, well, thanks everybody for turning out. It's an early start um, for Suzanne's transfer talk. Uh, so, Mark and Andrew are the co supervisors, and Marcus and uh, Monica are the uh, examiners. So, you know how this goes, you've, done the, you've seen plenty of these before. Suzanne gives a uh, 20 odd minute talk, okay, and then there's some public QA, okay, after which point, you know, we ask everybody who's not part of the supervisory panel or the examination team to leave the room, all right? So, over to you, Susan. Okay, so yeah, thanks everyone for this uh, great turnout to my transfer talk. Uh, I'm Susan, supervisor Mark and Andrew, and the title for my PhD is A Lightweight ETL Framework for On Demand Queries. I'll start at the beginning uh, with the introduction of what is ETL, what are data marts, what's the problem I'm working with, and why is it difficult. Then I'll go through some of the key studies in the area of on-demand related research and sum up uh, where I think the opportunity is. I'll go through my proposed solution, start with my hypothesis and research goals, then move on to my proposed methodology and some of the metrics and plan for evaluation. In my work debate, I'll be going through the key components of the architecture I've built so far, talk about a case study I was working with and how my PhD is broken down into work packages. I'll talk about my next steps and then finish. And okay, to start with what is ETL? Extract transform load is the process of migrating data sets from one or more sources to a target schema from which it can be queried and analyzed. So you're a business owner, you have your in-house data warehouse, and you want to combine that with multiple external data sets, but these data sets are very different from each other. So you need to combine them into a single target schema so that you can view them together without having to write separate queries for each data set. It's been the standard framework for data integration since the 70s, and traditionally it's run in bulk updates, such as monthly, daily, whatever works. If we drill down into how this works traditionally, you have your relational instances and some external data sets which go through an extraction process into some sort of temporary staging area. While the data sets are in the staging area, they'll go through a set of transformation functions. Some of these will be very standard, such as deduplication, and others will have to be written specifically for each data set, such as data cleansing, unit conversion, and resolving heterogeneity, which is when different data sets use different terms to mean the same thing. So they go through this process of transformation functions which have to be written manually by a developer. And finally, they're loaded to a data warehouse from which data marts are produced based on separate business requirements, and then these data sets which are pre-populated are queried. A data mart then would look something like this. This is a sales data mart generated by the sales business requirement, and it holds the measures, which are sales and profits, so those are the things that are being measured, being counted, and the fact table contains links to each of the dimension tables, region, product, customer, and time, which provide the context for the data. The problem is that traditional methods of data warehousing are heavy in overheads and limited in their capabilities. Basically, data warehouses and this ETL process is expensive to build, both in terms of time and money and manpower, it usually involves this large manual input from domain expert. Once this is built, then it's inflexible. It's difficult to update, it's costly to update, it's uh, difficult to integrate new unseen data sources. Every time a new data source needs to be involved, this manual input needs to be done all over again for this data source. Then once that's done, we have the issue of data redundancy. So the data sets have gone through this data warehouse and data marts have been created. But we often find, with working with our industry partners, that only a small amount of that data is actually needed for the queries. And that assumes that user requirements don't change, which generally they do. Traditional ETL isn't flexible enough to deal with either changing data sources or changing user queries. That gets additionally complex when businesses have a requirement for web data, which they usually do. Web data is in semi-structured formats and multiple different formats. It's unstable, meaning a website that you've been relying on for data for years might suddenly completely change its structure, or just disappear altogether, or a new web source might emerge, again leading to this big manual input. As well as that, web data is notorious for quality issues, such as missing data, duplicated data, and the big headache is heterogeneity, where the data doesn't have any standard to conform to. So each 
data source will have its own standards leading to these conflicts and heterogeneity. Now, when we talk about on-demand ETL, we're talking about an ETL system where the extract, transform, and loading of the data is triggered by user queries instead of being done in these bulk updates. The data and the metadata are still imported and stored, but there's an automated construction of data marks in response to unseen queries, as opposed to pre-populated data marks being constructed using all the data available. It's generally found to be faster, cheaper, and more extensible than traditional ETL. And more recent work includes a non-deterministic approach. When you're integrating data sources, it often results in missing data, because the data sources will have different attributes. <coughs> Non-deterministic queries are when the query results may have an accuracy of less than 100%, or may contain more than one possible answer to the same query, what they call a set of possible worlds. And the question that researchers are asking themselves is, will users accept a small penalty in accuracy for large savings and overheads? So now I'll go through some of the key studies that have influenced my work. The first thing I read on on-demand ETL was Cargill's work, which they call lazy ETL, same thing. Their approach is that the metadata is loaded up front or eagerly, while the extraction, transformation, and loading of the data is done when the data is queried. <coughs> they evaluated this using a seismology data set and found savings in both time and space efficiency. Similarly, I'll be working on a system that loads the metadata eagerly but delays the ETL of the actual data. What I feel is missing from Cargan's work is some extra features to address the additional complications in web data. They didn't use web data, they just used this one seismology data set. Multiple data files, but one data set. I'll be working with lots of different data sets, so whatever I build will need some additional features to cope with heterogeneity. More recently then is Baldacci's work, which they call Query Extract Transform Load, where multi-dimensional data marks are populated as needed and then dropped when the space is needed. They had a heavy emphasis on data reuse, but didn't use non-deterministic queries. So I want to write an approach that uses a non-deterministic query, non-deterministic approach to see if I can make further savings. And then probably the most recent, uh, I should say the most influential um, researcher on my work is Yang. Their approach involves uh, probabilistic query processing where the results of the query are given in the form of PC tables, that's probabilistic conditional tables, which are relation instances that show multiple possible worlds with a probability assigned to each. They developed a set of heuristics that they call the cost of perfect information, which measures the penalty of a 100% accurate query result. What's missing from their work is a methodology to include previously unseen data sources. To sum up, on-demand ETL is the state of the art. It's what people are talking about. It's what people are experimenting with. And how it works is that metadata is handled differently. It's handled eagerly, whereas data is handled lazily. I feel that there is an opportunity to use this methodology to address unseen web data sources. In order to do that, I need an underlying ETL architecture which is as robust, generic, and flexible as possible. So my proposed solution. My hypothesis is, in order to deliver an on-demand ETL system that incorporates web data, unseen web data, it requires a methodology for modeling and capturing unseen sources a capability for the auto-creation of data marks, and a prediction engine for non-deterministic queries to populate the data marks. I can break that down into five research goals. First is to develop a framework that adheres with traditional ETL layers, but which automates, insofar as possible, the integration of new data sources. Two, specify a domain-dependent canonical model which is crucial to delivering conformance in a system which facilitates unseen data sources. Three, specify a meta model and methodology with which to describe any participating data source so that metadata can be captured, stored, and later used to support on demand queries. Four, develop a dynamic data loading process that underpins an on demand paradigm. And finally, to develop a process to manage non deterministic queries in an on demand environment. So, in broad strokes, here's what my methodology might look like a query comes in through some sort of system interface. And the first question is, can an existing data mark completely fulfill the query? There's three possible outcomes to this. If yes, easy, we're done, return the results, and for the experimental stage only, validate the results. 
The other possibility is that there's no one data mart that can address the query, but there are multiple ones that can partially address the query, and together they all can. So we're looking at integration strategies for those data marts, we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Or the other possibility is even with all the data marts already in existence, no, the query can't be fulfilled. So next, we look at what data we have stored but not yet imported to a data mart. Extract what's needed. Next question. Is a new data mart required or does an existing one need an update? If a new data mart is required, construct data mart. If not, or when that's done, transform and load the data. Generate the results in a probabilistic representation. Return the results and, for the purpose of the experiment, validate. So to drill into some possible data mart integration strategies, I see three possible solutions to this. Let's say that these three data marts between them can return the answer to a query. The simplest solution is just to take the three of them, merge them. Merge these two, then merge the next one into it, and return the result. This is the simplest way of doing it. Um, the issue is that there might be information in these three that's not needed to return the res not needed to fulfill the query result. So that would lead to data redundancy in this data mart. The next possibility is when there's maybe one data mart that is, shall we say, close to addressing the data mart, but there's bits needed from other data marts. In that case, what I might do is take the one that's closest to fulfilling the result, closest to fulfilling the query as is, extract the bits that are missing that are present in the other data marts, merge those into the data mart, and return the final result. This is a bit less of a blunt instrument than just merging all, but again, there might be information in this data mark that's not needed. Again, possibly leading to some redundancy. Or probably the more complex solution, but one that will give the most lightweight data mart is take the three data sets, data marts, extract exactly what's needed from each, use those to construct a new data mart, and return the data mart. In terms of evaluating these data marts, there's a few uh, metrics involved. A query queue is expressed, a data mart is built to fulfill the query, there will be a cost involved of building the data mart, which I'll call W, most likely measured in time, and the data mart will have a certain accuracy A, which I'll evaluate in comparison to a golden standard, which will be built by the developer. What this might look like then, a query comes in and to evaluate, two data marts are created, one by the developer and one using my lightweight ETL system. And so my questions are, what are the savings in W, the cost, and what is the loss in A, accuracy? The data mark built by the developer will have a high cost. It will take a lot of time and probably a lot of money, but it will be very accurate. So the question is, how much of a saving and how much of a loss in accuracy is there? We'll be using feedback to the end, from the end user to determine that sweet spot between savings and accuracy. So my work to date is as follows. <coughs> So I talked about that underlying ETL architecture that was as robust, generic, and flexible as possible. And here's what it might look like. Well, here's what it looks like. Looks like it's done. Um, the enterprise data and any number of web data sources go through the same importation process, where the metadata is written to the metabase right away, and at the same time, a transformer template is written. In the metabase is a set of user-defined import templates, one for each data source. And I'll be going through those in more detail in just a minute. After that, there's this very simple transformation process done on the data where it's converted to a set of attribute value pairs. Then they're written to a data lake, which is just a low-cost, low-overhead schema list data repository. And then the data is extracted from the data lake when it's needed, as we saw from the query on demand system. The transformer templates are used to be transformed, loaded, and then loaded to a data mart. So if you think about uh, this line right here, sorry, standing in front, this is done and this is still to do. The query on demand system which will use this whole architecture to make it simple. So to drill into a couple of those key components, first is the metabase. The metabase has two basic purposes. First is that it holds my common agri model, which is that canonical model for all data marts to conform to. It's basically the structure of an ivory warehouse to which all the data marks conform. So that's a set of dimension names, method attributes, and so on. Next is that it holds a set of import templates, which are user-defined one per data file. 
The three pieces of information that they hold is the source metadata, for example, the date of the most recent version of data from this source. Some information for data mart management, for example, a set of flags that say which data files have been loaded to data marts <coughs> and which haven't. And finally, the physical layout of the data file, for example, the number of rows and columns. This optimizes the process of importing data to the data lake, as well as making it optimal for extracting from the data lake when it's needed. The next is those transformer templates. The purpose of the transformer templates is for term mapping, which I call assigning a canonical term to each term in the data source, in the source data. So let's say I have multiple data sources and they use these different terms, Republic of Ireland, Ireland Rep of, to all mean the same thing. So using the transformer template, all of these get mapped to just Ireland. It also handles things like automatically converting any units to the metric system and converting any currencies to the special drawing right from the IMF. Originally, writing these transformer templates was a manual job, but it was quickly found that once the data sets were any decent size, it didn't scale. So I wrote a process to automate that using a domain-specific agrarian ontology I built for that purpose. So there was a case study then with KeyPack, um, my industry partner. They had a business requirement to prepare their data and some specified web data for extraction in an automated manner. We fully specified that then to a research objective, to import enterprise and web data into my ETL architecture, including generating the import and transformer templates. There were five data sources involved. Keypack gave me a sample of their sales data, which was the price of beef products, and then they specified four web sources, you can see them there, which were data about international trade of the same beef products. There were large data sets with all those types of heterogeneity we saw when we were talking about the transformer templates. This gave me an opportunity for a short-term validation of my ETL architecture, rather than wait until the final solution was built and then find there were problems with it. So I ended up surpassing the objective that we decided on and I populated a data mark using their acquired data. I used their data to populate nine dimensions, five measures, and two fact tables. For example, uh, in the data, you'd find reporter and partner columns, which are the two countries involved in any trade transaction. So I used both of those to populate the geo dimension. The kind of measures involved were trade weight and trade value, and each data source had between six, between three and 60,000 rows of data. So when this was done, I asked myself a few questions. Did each data set remain complete from the beginning to the end of that importation process? Are the transformations I did on the data consistent, and is the ontology complete enough to transform these data sets? In the first version, the answer to all those was no, absolutely not. The first version of the data mart was full of errors, so I categorized those errors into three types. Both fact and dimension data could be prone to value mismatch errors, where a single data point changed value in a way I didn't expect between the beginning and the end. Dimensional data sometimes had ontology completeness errors, where the ontology was missing a term that it needed to map a source, <coughs> a source original term to. So it got mapped to null. Or both types that have cardinality errors, where the data set changed size from one end of the importation process to the other. So I used a couple of simple tests, an ordered list test and a frequency pattern test, to find each of those errors and set up the system so that the data wouldn't be loaded to a data mart unless it passed those tests. So now my question became, how can I be sure that these tests are looking for the right kind of errors? In order to find that out, I sampled my data sets and deliberately inserted errors into them so that I could be sure that they were being correctly categorized. As of my last time running this experiment, the test successfully categorized the expected outcome in 27 cases out of 28. There was one issue where a value mismatch error was mislabeled as an ontology completeness error, but there were no errors found that couldn't be categorized into one of those three types. So how my PhD can be broken down into work packages is as follows. The project management and literature review are always an ongoing process. The first uh, work package that I completed was the specification of that canonical model that I call the common agree model. The next was to fully specify the ETL architecture, so that's the data lake management system, metabase key components, and automating that process of transformer generation. Next was the data importation process and validation, and most recently completing that first case study from KeyBank. The next steps are more case studies, 
uh, data marts dynamically constructed, I'd say I've made a, a start on that, maybe a rough first version. Um, and then finally, on-demand ETL and non-deterministic queries and on-demand evaluation and reporting and dissemination, again, always ongoing. Some metrics that I've had, uh, work packages two, three, and four have been published in conferences and I've had a few poster presentations. I was lucky enough to win Best Poster Award last year. And then my next steps are as follows. <coughs> the automated transform template construction, um, that's done but I feel it can be optimized further, so I'm still going to say that's a short term next step. And then completing that data mart auto construction and integration, and then I'll be looking for new case studies. My long-term goal then is the full query on-demand system. So that's query construction and analysis, a methodology for on-demand data mark refreshment, a non-deterministic element to address missing data, and then fully specified validation process for on-demand data marks. To sum up, the problem is that traditional ETL is costly, inflexible, and insufficient for today's analysts. The nature of web data makes this more complex again. So I propose a solution involving on-demand queries with probabilistic query results. My work to date is that I've specified and built a lightweight ETL platform to underpin that system, fully specified the common agri model, and developed methodologies for capturing new data sources and constructing data marks, and I've automated the transformation and loading processes. My next steps are in the short term, fully automate the process to construct data marks and long-term on-demand queries. Gantt chart is as follows. So you can see that basically up as far as work package four is done. Work package five, the dynamic data mark construction, is a start made, and then my on-demand queries and on-demand evaluation are still to do. Okay, thanks everyone. Happy to take any questions. Okay, so <coughs> any of the, uh, the non-examining team, if you have any questions. So I, I, I've got a question just to kick off. Um, sure. So you presented those three models at the beginning, you know, when you were talking about the different data marts and what you could do to... The integration strategies? Yeah, so you, yeah. you could amalgamate the whole of all of them or you could take parts of each one. Mm. But I'm assuming that it, it must be at least possible that two different data marts have information which is contradictory. So what do you do in those, in those cases? Hmm. So one says sub, I don't, x equals yes and one says x equals no. Uh, what, you know, so how, how do you, what, that must affect the merging process. Do you, do you just do you merge everything except the contradictory uh, information, or well, um, what do you do? What I would imagine is that that's the part where the probabilistic query results would come in. Okay. Uh, so what I would most likely do in that situation is I'd deliver a data mart that maybe has both options, considering the non-deterministic approach gives you multiple possible worlds, and there'll be a probability assigned to each, okay. and then. The end user has the choice of saying, shall I take shall I take both, shall I take the one with higher probability, and so on. Okay. And in your your architecture diagram, if you mm. can just pick that back up. Absolutely. So when you talked about the need, you said, okay, so we might need to construct a, a brand new data mart. Mm. Uh, we had a, a flow diagram. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't quite understand why, so what, if you do 3A. Yeah. Okay, so you now have a, a an existing data mart. Mm. So why does that... Well, maybe I don't really understand what transform load is. Why, why can you not just use the query now? Why can the query not just go to 3A? Uh, and then the answer goes straight to 6. Why does it have to go through 4 or 5? Um, because when the data is extracted from the... It will be extracted from the data link first. And when that's done, um, it won't be transformed. So if you do that, then we okay. still have heterogeneity because... Well, assuming that um, the results will be pulled from multiple different uh, data sources, which it's safe to assume they will be. Uh, it's, kind of, it's too easy to assume that, uh, that they wouldn't be. So you still need to resolve the heterogeneity such as uh, the different units. Okay, yeah. okay. any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Thanks. the system of the architecture because uh, people may need to wait uh, maybe a long time to get the, get the, the results. For example, if the, the, the data is not in, in your data bar, then the, uh, then the query and the, the data is not in the data bar, in the data bar then they extract the data and then 
transform the data in your day to day, as mm. you mentioned, then maybe this should wait a uh, long time. And uh, also, a lot of the data is built uh, in the big data in the big data platform. Mm. So when they extract data or transform the data, it's also needed. Mm. It needs some time to do this. So, so have you ever considered uh, any question? Uh, yeah, certainly that's come up a few times as um, that on-demand ETL, basically when a query is launched, essentially the system has more to do than if the data marks were pre-populated. So you might be right, but what I've found uh, just reading the literature so far is that no, there's not that much of a cost. Uh, generally, people report that on-demand ETL is quicker than traditional ETL. Um, but you might be right, and that'll certainly be a factor that I consider in my W, my cost of preparing a data mart in the uh, valuation metrics. Um, so basically, we'll see. If it does turn out that it's, there's a hit in efficiency, then that'll be compared to the efficiency of writing manually these transformation processes, which at the moment we're finding with our industry partner they're finding that a really onerous task. Um, so they're finding that, basically, they're looking for ways of avoiding that big manual input at the start. Even if maybe there does mean there's a bit of a hit in the lag of fulfilling a query, that remains to be seen. That's something I still have to experiment with, basically. Okay, please, Matt. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, you, you two can hold your questions, so I'll let, uh, <laughs> let these people go and do something else. Okay, so that's thanks, Susanna. Okay, thanks.